lost the court again. He lost with the stop and frisk. He lost with the taxi plan. And now he lost with his silly ass big soda band. Good, good, good. What a silly fucking idiot. Wasting the, the, the city lawyer's time and our money with these stupid fucking illegal and unconstitutional kind of plans that he keeps coming up with. He knows, you know, the, his, his big problem, and after, like, almost 12 years of being mayor of New York, he still doesn't get it that he's not the CEO of a company in which he is the major shareholder anymore. And he, he can't just, like, abuse people and make up rules as he fucking goes along, which is still what he tries to do. Thank goodness we still have something of a judicial system in this country and in this city so that he gets occasionally shown the fucking door. I would have meant to be a fly on the wall when when he found out that his his soda jerk plan was dead. I would have I would have I would have given a month's rent for that shit. But you know, on a serious note, this shit is not really all that funny because, for example, with the taxi scheme, it was it was against the city charter. It was against the state constitution. Andrew Cuomo gave him a hand job, knowing full well that the thing was going to fail. I mean, who the hell is not in favor of having metered taxis running up and down the side streets of the South Bronx so that anybody who comes out of a building in the South Bronx who's not stopped and frisked by a Bloomberg cop and wants to go somewhere can go get into a taxi. Well, it's, that, that's a wonderful idea. And, you know, I, I, I drive into the Bronx. In fact, you know, my garage is located in the Bronx. I live in Harlem. And from time to time, not only do I drive into the Bronx, I sometimes even pick up passengers in the Bronx. But it's very rare. I'll tell you why. You know, there are two things. There are two factors about taxis. You could even say three. One is tourists. There are not a whole lot of tourists walking around the Bronx, not even the North Bronx. Then there's population density. Some parts of the Bronx are densely populated. Others are lightly populated. But dollars per acre? Forget about it, man. I will go empty to the Bronx and start looking for passengers in the Bronx instead of looking for passengers in Manhattan. When Charles fucking Schwab opens an office on 138th Street and St. Anne's Avenue. How fucking about that? Yeah, and, and the ridiculousity of all of that. Now, Bloomberg was, dis was counting on a billion dollars in medallion sales in his silly freaking green taxi plan that was going nowhere. I mean, Governor Andrew Cuomo's father and former governor... Mario Cuomo is in the business of financing and refinancing and second mortgaging New York City taxi medallions. Now, how stupid is a man to think that that person and his son is going to just roll over and let the medallion prices get trashed because some asshole woke up with an idea some some morning that's, uh, sure, it sounds good. Like I said, man, let's send Wexel up to 138th Street empty and let him drive up and down 138th Street looking for people who want to take a yellow taxi. Get the fuck out of here. Now, so that fail left the city with a $1 billion gap in its budget. So that's, that's really not a joke at all. There's nothing really funny about a billion-dollar gap in the New York City budget. And now we have him looking like an asshole once again. And he gets on the national media, and he talks about how he's concerned with people's health. 
Okay, so you walk down the street where I live, and you got people standing on the so sta uh, sidewalks selling single unpacked cigarettes, tobacco that is, saying Lucy, 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 looking back and forth to see if a cop is coming, just like the old days with weed. It's it's crazy, Alan. This is very good for people's health. And then what do we have? We have. Um, the soda ban, and the soda ban is like the biggest silly shit that that he could have possibly thought of. Now, if he is concerned about people's health, why does he say he's going to dilly dally for ten years? In other words, they're setting up a ten-year schedule for removing the PCBs from 1,200 schools. Do you know what those PCBs are doing to our children? They're making sure that quite a few of them are going to die younger than they had to die, in more pain than they had to endure, with cancers that can't be cured. They're making sure that thousands and thousands of them are going to be mentally stunted because PCBs fuck up the human brain. And Michael Bloomberg doesn't see a fucking emergency here. Does, does, does Christine Quinn see an emergency here? No. Two years ago, she was talking about, oh, we got to do this in five years. Well, two years are gone, Christine. What the fuck has happened? Has any of it been removed? No. Now, what about John Liu? I haven't heard from you, John. What about the other joker? What's his name? De Blasio. Bill De Blasio. You see, John Liu was the city controller. I'm not saying he ran the city or controlled it, but he was in charge of the budget, more or less. And um, not making the budget, but managing the budget. De Blasio is the public advocate. He's the man who's supposed to stand up and say, Wait a minute, Mr. Mayor. Wait a minute, Mr. Bloomberg. Wait a minute, Miss Quinn. This is fucking wrong. Wrong. You got to do something about the about the PCBs or I'm taking your asses to court. C-O-U-R-T, court. You get it? Because I'm the public advocate. I'm the guy that looks out for the people when the mayor and the city council speaker either fall asleep on the job or doing the wrong fucking job. That's Bill de Blasio's job up till now. Now he wants to be the mayor. I don't know. I don't read the papers every fucking day. Bill de Blasio, what have you done about this PCB shit? Yeah, so John Liu and Bill de Blasio, they don't run the city, and they don't have the power of the mayor, but between the two of them, that is, if they weren't competing with each other, but if they were like real Democrats, like the old school Democrats, like Governor Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or even Mayor, Mayor Wagner, do you think that they would sit and let this kind of shit go down? No fucking way. They had some kind of conscience and they had some kind of backbone. Now, I want to know what's happening with the P fucking C Bs. Why is it that we have a 10 year plan to remove something that's poisoning thousands of children, stunting their growth, and dooming them to die of cancer? Will John Liu tell me about that? Will Bill de Blasio tell me about that? Will Christine Quinn tell me about that? Will the editor of the New York Times tell me about that? I doubt it very much.